Dak Prescott was a quarterback 20 this year uh, in 11 games. There it is. Uh, six top 12 finishes, four outside of the top 15, one smack dab in the middle there. In 11 games, he led the league in interceptions with 15 of them. He went on a brutal stretch throwing multi-pick games. Can you trust Dak Prescott in fantasy football anymore? I think you can. I think he's going to put up enough stats. This team's going to move the ball well enough where he's going to, um, I think he's going to be a top 12 option next year. This is his first year where he, like the interceptions really got away from him, right? He's had a couple, couple years. His previous high was in 2017 with 13 of them. So I don't think that this is something that's going to continue. Um, but I also think it's going to depend on what this Dallas team does. If they don't bring in a wide receiver, I am going to have a lot more, a lot tougher time truly trusting Dak next year, right? If Tony Pollard's not back, I'm going to have a lot harder time trusting um, Dak Prescott next year because I think Michael Gallup's a pretty decent wide receiver, but I don't think he's the answer as their wide receiver too. I'm only going to be interested in Dak Prescott next year, I think, if I'm stacking him with CeeDee Lamb. That might be my only interest in Dak Prescott. No. Like, you look at, like, the turnover worthy play percentage that he had this year. It, it was incredibly low still. Mm. Um, and, and it's like, well, how can you have low percentage of turnover worthy plays if you lead the league, lead the league in interceptions? Um, it takes a lot of different things into account. Uh, you can go yep. look up the metric and, 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 you know, kind of do, do the homework there. But essentially, like, equivocates that like Dak Prescott's interceptions, not all that many were on him necessarily this year. There's a lot yeah. of different factors that go into play there. I just, I don't see myself like finding Dak next year and drafting and being like, Oh, what a value I got as a quarterback 10. Yeah. I don't see myself saying that. Like I'll draft him as quarterback 10 and I'm going to say, great. I got him as a quarterback 10. I'm not going to be super stoked to enter into to the season with him. Unless if I'm like fully stacked everywhere else. Yeah, uh, and he would probably be, require a CD Lamb stack for me. He's a quarterback that you really hope people overreact on about the interceptions after yes. watching this game. That maybe he drifts to quarterback thirteen or something like that, right? That people are just so nervous about Dak that they're like, "Oh, we're gonna hype up Daniel Jones and push Dak down." Then you're like, "Oh, I'll maybe I take Dak then. maybe I go Dak and Kyler Murray then, right? I take Kyler Murray at an injury discount because just because I don't know how." fast he's going to be back and then i also have dak as my backup just in case you know it takes Tyler a couple weeks he's just one that i'm i think i'm going to have a hard time putting a ton of faith into dak in redraft yep. leagues next year if you're in dynasty you know you ride it out with dak like yep like i have dak in uh, at least one of my dynasty leagues the one that i just won the championship in this year and i had him a stack with cd lamb subtle flex <laughs> sorry not like i, I it, <laughs> But like, I feel like I needed to add that dose of credibility of like, no, no, I know I just sense. like ripped on sense. Dak a little bit, but like, I also just won yeah. a dynasty yep. league with Dak, and it's because I stacked him with CD Lamp, and that's where I'm interested in Dak, because I think we are seeing this leap from CD Lamb. We're seeing this leap uh, to trust CD Lamb as a top eight fantasy wide receiver from here on out, and I want the guy who's going to be throwing him the football, uh, because those stacks are are lethal most of the time. 